you know, I grew up in Newport News, Virginia, where, where I say you could throw a rock and hit three, three churches by accident. You know, churches are everywhere. You know, so I, I knew a lot about Christ, but I didn't really know Christ. And there's a big difference between knowing about Christ and actually knowing Christ. You know, uh, my parents divorced when I was two years old and um, my mom was codependent. So we had a rotating door of fathers in and out of our life. Um, got to see my dad on the weekend. There was a, a, a time where mom took us to church. She would take us to Christmas services and Easter services. Um, my dad was a believer, just wasn't in, in and out of church very often. Didn't follow him closely. And that was my example of what a Christian was. So I made a, a choice to pray a prayer when I was 11 years old um, to give my life to Christ at a Christmas service. But as far as I knew, that was it. It was a get out of jail free card. I believe in Jesus. You know, if I die, I'm going to go to heaven, you know. But, you know, around the time I got to about a teenager, I was really angry, started fighting, um, drinking, partying, doing the stuff that lost people do. And, you know, I was so lost. I tell people the blind are, are the blind. They don't know what they don't know. And um, I didn't know what I didn't know. So I might be on my way to fight you praying I win, you know, and I didn't feel any conviction about that. You know, I might be driving down the road drunk praying I didn't get a, a DUI, you know, and, and didn't feel any conviction on that because I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know the Lord, you know, and uh, I remember at 16 years old, I, I, I had a ankle bracelet on and it wasn't jewelry. It's one of those ones with big black boxes, you know, where they give you when you're on house arrest. And um, I wasn't supposed to get any more trouble. If I did, I had to go back to juvenile detention. And I tell people when, when you don't know the Lord and you're trying to stay out of trouble, trouble will find you somehow, you know? And I remember I went to a soccer game to watch the soccer game and cool off. I had an issue going on with the girl that I was with at the time. And I'm trying to cool off, not fight a guy that she was with the night before. And wouldn't you know it, a, a rival high school pulled up. Guys run out of the, the truck with this girl on the field, and they start streaking all around on the soccer field. And, uh, and I wasn't going to do anything about it because I'm there to stay out of trouble, you know, not get in trouble. But I did say something, you know. Um, I, I won't say what I say because we on a Christian, you know, uh, on, a, on, a, on a TV show, you know. But I said something. And uh, what ended up happening is I, I lost my temper because guys who, if you don't know the Lord, you don't really have the self-control, even if you're trying to stay out of trouble. And I ended up and his girlfriend was there. She had blonde hair. And uh, when I did, she, she dials those three numbers, 911. And immediately I was like, man, why'd I do that? Why'd I do that? Uh, just regret hit me. I knew I was going to go to jail. I had to go back to jail. And uh, I went back to jail and uh, fast forward this story. Two years later, I, I'm out of jail. I get a job as a painter. And uh, my first paint crew had a bunch of, you know, guys who are addicted to drugs on it, like the trades typically do have. But by the grace of God, I got switched to a different paint crew. And on this paint crew were a bunch of radically saved black dudes, uh, guys that were, that were, you know, saved in jail guys that were saved out of you know b dealing drugs and they would pick me up in the morning blasting kirk franklin on the on the <laughs> radio and wow gospel music talking about jesus said this and jesus said that and it's six in the morning i got a hangover from the night before i don't want to necessarily hear all that at six in the morning but you know they didn't care because they were burning they were on fire for the lord you know, and I tell people, listen, uh, evangelism is the natural overflow of a heart that's on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you love God with all of your heart, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. It won't even necessarily be something that you have to work yourself up to do. You, you can't help yourself. Mm -hmm. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, because you know him, evangelism is the natural overflow. Jesus says that we are the light of the world. A city on the hill cannot be hidden. Neither did they light a lamp and place it under a basket of fear or a basket. A lot of times that basket is to fear, fear of man. But these guys, they didn't fear man. They didn't fear anything because they knew Jesus. They had encountered the man, Jesus Christ, who's resurrected from the dead, and it changed them on the inside. And when I saw that, it caused me to begin to pursue the Lord. And I began to pursue the Lord. And long story short, I, I met him in my pickup truck as I was crossing New York 
Yorktown River Bridge in, in uh, Yorktown, Virginia. And uh, I met the Lord. And just to kind of follow up on that story that I shared earlier, after I got saved, God told me to go to this Baptist church. And I went in that, into that first Baptist church in Newport News, Virginia. And my first Bible study, they were studying John chapter 1. And I remember being a brand new believer. I had I read the Bible before, but it never been alive like in that moment. We began to read the Bible, and and they wanted to just stop after one chapter. And I was like, "No way! How can you stop? Like, please, somebody stay with me. I just want to read more of the Bible." And two people stayed with me: one girl and one guy. And we shut the church down. Literally, we read till past midnight. The janitor came up to us and said, "Hey, guys, can you guys keep reading?" across the street at the Waffle House. You know, I want to go home and be with my family. And so we did. We, we left. We went to the Waffle House. We're reading the Bible. After a few minutes, the girl looks up, this blonde-haired girl. She looks up. She said, hey, Richie, let me ask you a question. Were you at a soccer game two years ago, and you punched this dude in the face? And I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, this girl has blonde hair. The girl who called the cops on me had blonde hair. And I got embarrassed. And she, she tapped me on the shoulder. She said, hey, Richie, don't worry about it. That day I started praying for your soul. Wow. And uh, so I, I want to tell all the viewers, maybe you have friends or, or family who don't yet know the Lord. Maybe they're struggling with different things. I got family members that are struggling with addiction to this day. Never discount the power of your prayers when it comes to seeing people get born again and get saved. God never gives up. His word says, love never fails. He is love, and he's pursuing uh, your family member. Pray for somebody who's watching right now that maybe is lost. They stumbled across this channel, and they need the hope of Jesus. Can you take a minute and speak to them about yeah, Christ? Absolutely. You know, I grew up, like I said, without a father in my life, and there's a whole generation, a whole bunch of people out there who, when we say that God is a father, they ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. He said, pray this way, our father who's in heaven, there's no frame of reference for what a father is. I remember playing football and having all the accolades and people, you know, praising me for the, the skills I had on the football field. But all I wanted was to look up in the stands and see my father, my dad saying, go Richie. But it didn't happen for me because of our, our broken world. We can't help the families that we're born in. We can't help what happens, but we know this. The Bible says that God is a father to the fatherless. When I came into the kingdom, when I met Jesus Christ, I met the father. And I heard the father say, son, I'm proud of you. Keep going. Maybe you're watching live right now and you're, and you're, and you're hurting. You're broken. You, 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 you don't even know if there's a purpose in your life. I want you to know that there is a purpose. You were created to seek God and to find him. You have a father in heaven that so loved you, he gave his only begotten son, that those who believe in him shall not die, but have everlasting life. You can commit your life to Christ right now by a simple prayer from your heart. If you believe in your heart that Jesus was crucified on the cross and after three days he resurrected from the dead, you can be saved. Father, I pray that those who are, who are making that choice right now, as they pray, look upon their heart. You're not a lip reader, you're a heart reader. Read their heart and, 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 and forgive their sins and come into their life. Just pray this with me. Jesus, I fully surrender my life to you. You're looking at my heart. I give my whole life to you. In this moment, God, I believe. I want to be a disciple. In Jesus' name, amen.